G'day AMCA, uh, we're here with Matt Hollander from the uh, graduate student from the University of Wisconsin uh, talking about his research in ethnomethodology. So Matt, uh, tell us a little bit about your research. Uh, sure, I'm a graduate student at the University of Wisconsin and my dissertation involves using conversation analysis <clears throat> to look at the details of language and social interaction in the Stanley Milgram Obedience to Authority Experiment. Mm. And uh, my project involves um, uh, amassing a collection of about 120 of the, exper of the experimental sessions <clears throat> uh, that Milgram conducted in the early 60s and looking at the way that directives are used uh, in the experiment. Mm. Okay, so um, what, what, uh, the experiments themselves, how are you um, getting access to this and, and what are you doing with them? Sure. Um, recordings of the experiment uh, are kept at the uh, Milgram Archive at Yale, and uh, I uh, got a grant which allowed me to purchase uh, recordings of, uh, of, uh, of the experimental sessions, and so I'm amassing a collection of uh, those recordings and then having undergraduates in my university transcribe the sessions. And uh, I'm still at the very beginning stages of this project. I only have about six or seven of them transcribed. Um, I just gave a presentation at the uh, International Institute for Ethnomethodology Conversation Analysis uh, here in Freiburg, Switzerland, and uh, the preliminary finding that I was reporting involved uh, my interest in the way that obedient subjects um, uh, who displayed a great amount of resistance to the experimenters' orders in this experiment um, were nevertheless uh, induced to eventually become obedient and complete the experiment. Okay, for, for those um, uh, listeners who might not be intimately familiar with Milgram's experiment, mm -hmm. could you just step out the experimental design and, and what in particular you're look at, looking at when it comes to obedience? Sure. Uh, I basically see what I'm doing is re-specifying the concept of obedience uh, in the Milgram experiment. Milgram's experiment, uh, which is now about 50 years old, conducted in the summer, conducted 1961-1962, uh, was held in the basement of the psychology department at Yale mm -hmm. University and it involved Milgram recruiting uh, over 900 subjects uh, from the Connecticut community uh, into uh, that basement where he had an experimental situation set up in which he, um, uh, he persuaded uh, uh, these participants that mm -hmm. they were participating in a study of language and memory. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there were three participants essentially in this, uh, in this situation. Mm. Uh, the actual experimental subject uh, who was not aware of the true nature of the experiment and two actors, uh, both of which were Confederates of Milgram. Mm. Uh, the first actor was uh, known as the experimenter and the second actor was known as the learner. Mm. And the experimenter uh, posed as the actual experimenter in a psychological experiment studying uh, language, or studying learning and, uh, and memory. Mm. And the learner posed as uh, just another subject from the community who had also been recruited to participate in this experiment. Uh, and uh, basically what the experiment involved was mm -hmm. um, uh, the uh, teacher, as uh, the subject uh, was known in the context of this experiment, sitting down in a chair, and uh, Milgram had designed a very realistic looking machine, uh, which was, uh, he thought, the, the, the participant thought, mm -hmm. designed to deliver electroshocks mm -hmm. uh, to the other participant, the learner. And it was gradated on a scale of zero electroshocks to 450 volts uh, in 15 volt increments. And the experimenter directed uh, the, um, the uh, teacher to uh, read a list of word pairs to the learner. And uh, if the learner uh, incorrectly responded to these word pairs, then mm -hmm. the teacher was to uh, deliver an electroshock at first at 15 volts. And then for each word pair that the uh, learner uh, remembered incorrectly, to increase the increments uh, of the volts uh, by 15 volts each time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were several uh, conditions, several variations. Uh, there were 24 experimental conditions in all. Uh, but that's the general um, setup of the of the original obedience experiment that Melbourne conducted. Okay. And and so how does um, your your findings about uh, preliminary findings about obedience threats and directives fit into that um, that experimental design? Where are the threats and the the, the directives and, and so on and so forth that you're you're talking about? Mm -hmm. Well. Um, as another part of the experimental design, Milgram uh, uh, wrote down four 
uh, scripted directives for the uh, OB, for the experimenter to deliver to the learner if the experimenter encountered any resistance from the learner. Mm -hmm. And these were known as prods. So this is discussed in uh, Milgram's 1974 book, Obedience to Authority, which summed up uh, his experiment and his findings. Mm -hmm. And briefly, those scripted directives which the experimenter delivered had to do with saying things like, please continue, the experiment requires that you continue, uh, it's absolutely essential that you continue, uh, and so forth. Uh, and so in my project, what I'm looking at is uh, the actual recordings, the actual audio recordings of the experiment, and looking at the way that um, the experimenter uh, tailored or customized uh, these directives, these mm. scripted directives, uh, in the actual lived context of uh, the interaction with uh, the, uh, the teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, one thing that I'm very interested in is um, the design of the experiment whereby Milgram uh, uh, had the experimenter um, only call the experiment to an end and categorize that particular subject as obedient, um, or rather as disobedient, if the uh, subject um, successfully resisted four of these prods or directives. Uh, so to be categorized as disobedient, a subject had to not only resist the experimenter just one time, hmm. but four successive times. And uh, to me that uh, is an interesting feature of the design of the experiment, and it also seems somewhat arbitrary, hmm. um, somewhat stacking the deck in favor of, uh, of obedience. Right. So, you know, why um, why not just uh, call the experiment to an end after the subject had uh, resisted uh, a directive or prod just once? Um, uh, so that being said, my general purpose in this project is not so much to criticize the Milgram experiment as it is to uh, better understand what happened in the experiment. I see what I'm doing as contributing to the sociology of social scientific knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, to, so to science and technology studies, uh, and in general to illuminating conditions of possibility of the Milgram experiment that, in my opinion, the Milgram paradigm in social psychology has largely overlooked.